In this lesson, I'm going to talk about two analytical tools, amplitude statistics and frequency analysis. To follow along, let's go to Working Files and get the multi-track sessions 1201 multi-track demo. This is a multi-track session I'm using later in the course, but we can use it here as well. And then also go to Working Files and go to Music, Just Too Hard to Find, and going down here to Just Too Hard to Find edited WAV. These two analytical tools are both panels, and you find panels inside the window menu, window, amplitude statistics and frequency analysis. We'll start off with amplitude statistics. Open that up. I'm opening this up inside a multi-track session here because I want to show you that it doesn't work in a multi-track session. This scans a file, and it does not scan a multi-track session. So there's a little button down here that's grayed out that says scan. But if I switch over to a file, like this one here, just too hard to find edited, that little scan button suddenly shows up because now you can scan this entire file. Click scan here and it analyzes the entire file and comes up with some statistics. It says the peak amplitude, for example, is 0 dB, meaning it goes right to the top. This is a typical result of a pop music production where you try to have the volume go right to the edge. Just push things as far as you can to make sure you fill up that wall of sound. The true peak amplitude is a different measurement. This is the perceived loudness, and it's louder than 0 dB, which means it's relatively loud. Then the maximum sample value, minimum sample value, that's about as loud as you can get for a 16-bit file. Then this is possible clipped samples. That means that it's right to the edge. Are you clipping off the tops of these waveforms or the bottom of the waveforms? And it says there are lots of them that are possibly clipped. In fact, they're not. They're just pushed right to the edge. But the analysis tool says, you know, they might be clipped because they're pushed so far. I'll show you how to deal with that in a second. There is the DC offset where sometimes you record things and there's direct current applied to it. It does shift the way it's recorded. We can fix that easily. I'll show you that in a second. Then there's some more things like dynamic range and loudness again. There are these little light bulb-like things here. When you click on them, it takes you to the loudest thing or takes you to the thing that sets that off, which in fact is probably like the first little frame. It doesn't take you to each one subsequently. It just takes you to the first one that encounters at that level. So that's what those little guys are for. And down here it says what the ITU, the International Telecommunications Union Standard Loudness is, and this is minus 9 LUFs. Minus 9 LUFs is pretty darn loud. The standard is minus 24 or 23, depending. And that's way below minus 9 in terms of how loud something is. But this is not intended to comply with the standard. This is just showing you what it is relative to that standard. Now if we make some changes, we'll see what happens here. I'm going to pull this down a bit. I'm going to drop it just by 0.1 dB. Minus 0.1. And I'll just press Enter. Now I'll rescan it, and notice what happens. You get this exclamation point saying, hey, you made a change, you want to rescan it. And now you notice that there are no longer any possible clip samples. We just dropped it by a tenth of a dB, and it took care of all those possible clip samples there. I'm going to go change the DC offset here. When you've got this DC offset, it's really easy to fix, and it may not even be noticeable. It's kind of a phase issue, and it may be that the audio quality will be diminished slightly when you've got an offset like this. But this is relatively small. It's less than 2%. But we'll go fix that very easily by going to Favorites. And then go down to Repair DC Offset. This repairs it really quickly. I'll rescan it. The offset's been fixed. And now some other things change when you change the offset in terms of the peak levels. It does drop them a little bit like that. But now it says there are more clipped samples as well. So things do change when you change the DC offset like that. Another thing of interest is the RMS histogram. This shows you the left and right channel in terms of the volume levels. You can see that we're pretty much concentrating all the volume levels here at the high end. This shows the decibels below full scale, and there's zero. That's the top end. That's the highest, loudest end, and then we drop down from there. So we've got most of the volume right there at the highest end. You can compare right to left here. Here's the right channel, and here's the left channel. The left channel is a little bit louder, so you might want to drop that down a bit just to equalize things or increase the volume of the right channel. This is a quick way to get a view if you've got your channels a little bit unaligned in terms of volume levels. Not critical, but you might want to check that out. All right, that wraps up amplitude statistics. Let's get the other analysis tool here, window. Frequency Analysis, and this shows you frequency and decibels. Let me just lift this up a bit here. This will analyze both a clip like this and a multi-track session, and does this in real time. You have to play something and then see it displayed here. This is an old display from the previous time I worked with this. Let's just play this for a second. We'll see what happens. Now you see a real-time display there. I'm going to switch over to the multi-track session to show you that it works there as well. Now you see it's blank. We'll play this one now for a second. But it just couldn't be that way. You see the overall response there. The bass starts off at something like the minus 35 or so and goes up to like minus 20 and then drops down here. This is the frequency as you go to the right here. This is the highest frequency. 
low frequency, and this is the relative volume level for the various frequencies. You might want to take a look at an individual voice, for example. So I'm going to go to the lead vocal here and just solo her. We'll play that now. Let's see where she is. There you go. I just wanted someone to talk to. Now, if you want to work with this, let's say you want to have it just be a little bit more at the treble end, something like that, you can apply an effect and see the results. I'm going to go down here a little bit, open this up just a tad here, and bring in an EQ. Go to filter and EQ. We'll go to the 10 band because it's easy to work with. Reset this to default. And we'll just look at this here. I'm seeing that the frequency range drops off a little bit there, starting about 2K to 3K right around here. So I'm going to lift this up just a little bit like that and see how that affects this display. It may not be high quality in terms of audio, but let's see how it affects the display. Someone to help me I'm going to take a picture of that by pressing this little guy here that takes a little picture and holds that. Right. I never wanted to what I want to do now is turn this effect off and see the difference. To fall deep in love. A little difference there. It just didn't feel you can see the difference as you save these little photographs. As you make the adjustments here, you can see the differences that your changes to the effect makes there. Instead of that, let's take a look at the bass. Let's pull this thing down and take a look at the bass response there. Solo that. Clear these guys away by turning the buttons off there. Quite right, you try to change me. Whoops. I need to also turn off her solo. Now we'll try it again. You can see how that works. You can see that the bass there is definitely stronger at the bass end where you'd expect. It starts dropping off around oh, 300 hertz or so, and you see it drop down there. If I want to increase the bass response, we could do the same thing here. Scrolling down here a bit to the bass. Bring in an effect for the bass. Another graphic equalizer there. Reset this. And we'll take a look at this. You see it drop off there right around 200. Let's lift up 200 to 500 or so. So right about there, we'll start bringing you up. Bring up the bass even more there and see what difference that makes here in the response. Take a picture. Now I'm going to turn the effect off. Go back a little bit here in time just to play the same thing, basically. Take another picture. And you can see that where we lifted the bass there at the frequencies of about 250 to 500, you can see it's showing up here in that little graph. There are different ways to look at this. You can go instead of lines, you can go to area bars, but I like working with the lines. It's simpler, I think, and cleaner, so I stick with the lines there. All right, that's how you use the frequency analysis panel. You can use it on selected tracks, the entire session, or on individual clips.